if our fish are stressed of any kind, they will not perform well. So we want AKA happy fish. We want fish that are content, that have low stress, uh, that are in a high quality environment all the time. Welcome to The Switch, I'm Elena Casas. 130.9 million tonnes of farmed fish and seafood were produced globally in 2022, the first year that aquaculture overtook the catch of traditional fisheries. Demand for fish is soaring and wild populations are in danger from overfishing, but farmed fish is highly controversial. Much of it comes from sometimes porous ocean pens from which lice and disease can spread to wild populations, leading Canada to announce it will ban open net pen Atlantic salmon farms on its Pacific coast by 2029. Well, Canada's sustainable blue are instead farming salmon on land in tanks. And the company's head of sustainability, David Roberts, joins me now. David, hi. What makes this more sustainable? Those that are coming out of the net pens are basically boring from the local environment, the costs that are being incurred there as well. But their costs are continuing to go up. And as we're, you know, facing things like climate change, these are gonna manifest themselves as costs to the net pen industry. Sustainable Blue uses a water recirculation system that means no wastewater is discharged into the environment and the farms don't even need to be near the sea. The company says that also protects the health of the fish. We can create a barrier between the ocean and our fish so that any parasites, disease, pests, etc can be dealt with. Because of that, we don't have to use any therapeutants or disease agents or pest removal technologies, which uh, net pen farming operations are obligated to do at present. So does this method of land-based farming also help protect the wild population? One of the issues with net pen farming in the oceans is of course, uh, you can get collapse or breaches in the nets and fish can escape. Uh, even on the west coast of the US and North America, uh, Atlantic salmon is farmed there. These are not native uh, species to those uh, coastal areas. And most recently, you're seeing uh, closures and banning of net pen operations because there are documented uh, declines in uh, wide pop wild populations. In British Columbia, the looming ban is controversial. The Salmon Farmers Association says 7,000 jobs rely on open net farms. The U.S. state of Washington has already moved ahead with a ban and Sustainable Blue is planning an expansion there that would be five times the size of its current facility in Nova Scotia. There was pushback. There will always be pushback against uh, loss of jobs and employment. But I think as long as we can provide an alternative for employment uh, by, operating, by offering an uh, alternative production system in that sector, then I think, uh, you know, that's a level playing field. Do you think then that land-based salmon farming can provide a similar number of jobs? I do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, probably more. That new facility will initially produce about 5,000 tonnes a year. Salmon consumption in the US alone was more than 600,000 tonnes in 2022. Land-based fish farming isn't new, but producers have been put off by the energy costs. Does the consumer, though, need to accept that more sustainably produced salmon is going to cost them slightly more? I think presently, uh, yes, um, because there's a benefit to not only the consumer, but also to the, to the planet. How can you increase your market share, do you think? How can you convince the consumer that this is what they need to buy? We have a number of uh, people in our marketplace now that will not eat net pen farm salmon for a variety of reasons, uh, but will uh, want to purchase our salmon. If our fish are stressed of any kind, they will not perform well. So we want AKA happy fish. We want fish that are content, that have low stress, uh, that are in a high quality environment all the time. How important is it, David, that we change the way we farm our fish? We're not able, and we haven't for several decades now, been able to extract any more volume of fish from our oceans. We're pretty much tapped out. Uh, as the population, of course, grows, so does the demand for fish grow. So that's a double hit. 
and we're seeing more and more a demand for seafood. We need to be able to do that uh, cost effectively, but I think at scale that doesn't impact our oceans, which are probably the single biggest source of food for our planet. Otherwise, I think we're going to run into a hard stop at some point.